Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about designated initializers in C99, C20, and related struct literals in other languages, and explore some of the issues around those. But first, I want to point out that GCC 10 came out in the past week. You might not be able to download binaries yet, but it's official. And for kicks, I have updated my own build from Git to the GCC 10 series. GCC 10 includes concepts and the spaceship operator and coroutines behind a flag, but not yet modules. And for our purposes today, it also includes the C++20 designated initializers, although this technically has already been around for multiple versions in GCC as well as Clang. So I don't need to use any special flags to get at them, but it is part of the C++20 standard. Let's go see some code. We're gonna start in C because again, this comes originally to C++ by way of C99, as in 21 years ago. And some of the issues around it might help explain why it didn't get to C++ sooner. But first, let's motivate why we want this feature. So if you've ever coded much, you'll find sometimes you've made very long structs or classes before with a lot of fields inside of them. And it's nice to be able to give struct literals that tell you, here's some data for an instance of this struct. And without designated initializers, meaning named fields in my struct literal, I would have to specify them as a list in the correct order. And it's not easy for me to get more than two or three things in a list right. So because of that, I much prefer to have named fields when I'm defining a struct through a literal. So now here for my book, I have a number of string fields and I have a couple of integer fields as well. But when I go and create an instance of this struct in C, it doesn't matter what order I put these in. Furthermore, let's see what happens with this field that I didn't initialize when I created my book instance. If I build and run this, I find that number one, it compiles, and number two, the publisher was null. And that's because whenever you give any initialization values to a struct in C, anything you don't specify is guaranteed to be initialized to zero, which in this case is a null pointer. So I didn't just get lucky with uninitialized memory. Also for fun, note that in C99, we can specify our arrays out of order just like we can specify our structures out of order. I can put the index one in first and index zero in second. It still compiles. I didn't change anything in the behavior of running it. Note also that I can actually take an address of a struct literal in C. And this is here to point out that C has features C++ doesn't, and C++ is not a strict superset of the C language for quite a number of years. And to look at the difference between C and C++, let's run this exact program as if it were C++. Oh, we've got a number of errors here. First of all, we can't, even under C++20, specify our arrays out of order. Second of all, we can't take an address of a struct like this. And so let's get rid of both of those things and see where we're left. We still have an error that we can't use out of order field initialization even though now in C++20, we actually can officially use these designated initializers or named fields, but we have to do them in order. And even under this restriction of putting things in order, I still personally like the idea of naming my fields because again, I can keep track of a list of more than two or three things at a time and what they mean. Though I have to admit, requiring things to be in order does take some of the joy out of being able to use the named fields. But there's reasons why they do this and let's get into it. First, just to prove, we now actually do get a working program once we've made C++20 happy by its requirements. And perhaps it's worth just briefly pointing out that you can give default values to your struct fields in C++ these days. You say publisher by default is gonna be equal to unknown. So if we run this again, we see publisher unknown instead of the null pointer. Let's look closer at the issue of order of initialization and destruction. Here we have a simple example of a struct could have been a class that has just a storage of a number to go along with the thing. And we have a constructor to print out when construction happens and a destructor to tell us when destruction happens and has no real other purpose than to let us be aware of this issue. Then we have a team so we can put multiple things together into a structure. And let's create a team where A is gonna be thing one and B is gonna be thing two. Let's see what happens. We find thing one is constructed first, thing two is constructed second, and then they're destructed in reverse order. 
This is a big part of why C++20 cares about your designated initializers being in the same order as the struct definition. Because C++ has always defined the semantics of I'm constructing A, I'm constructing B, and therefore, to retain some sanity in terms of possible dependencies, we're going to destruct B, then destruct A. And all that happens automatically. And we're likely to confuse ourselves if we try to put these fields in a different order than what's actually going to be happening when it runs. But as we already saw, C has no such limitation in the order. Let's see how it behaves. In this C example, we have pseudo constructors and destructors. And we saw that we construct thing one, and we construct thing two, and then any destruction is a manual task on my part, not something provided directly by the language. And so because of that, the destruction will happen in whatever order I call the destruction. Notice also I'm sweeping under the rug issues of whether I'm passing by shallow copies, deep copies, references, and so on here, because most of that's irrelevant to my discussion today. But the point here being in C, that I control destruction, there's not so much inherent in the semantics of the language of what order things are supposed to happen in. But let's see what happens if I change the order and run it again. I said build two first, build one second, but the order I got was still thing one and thing two. What does this mean? For this, let's look at the spec. And over here in the C specification, or a draft of it, we see that the order in which any side effects occur is unspecified for these expressions. And as a side note, this might be a good reason to avoid side effects in your programs. But in any case, the order is unspecified by the spec, and my compiler right now, at the moment at least, is constructing them in the order they're defined in the struct, and not in the order I've listed them in my literal. Let's take a look at other languages and see what they're doing, starting with Zig. In Zig, I have another pseudo constructor and a pseudo destructor for my thing. And I also have a team here with a pseudo destructor of its own. It has a thing A and a thing B. Down here, I create a team, and then I manually destruct it. Let's see how this goes. I get thing one and thing two, then I destruct thing two and thing one. Though I'm manually calling these, this defer feature from Zig, which is similar to the defer feature from Go, allows me to run any code afterward and still make sure that this gets called even if something else exited early. And furthermore, the defers happen in the reverse order in which they're called, which mimics that stack mentality that we saw in C++ and helps perhaps to make sure you're destructing things in the order you expect. But let's see what happens if I change the order of initialization in Zig. Now I get thing two, then thing one. The other thing to point out is that in Zig, there's no guarantee by default that it even lays out in memory things in the order in which I specified them in the struct. Now let's take a look at Rust, which has another way of thinking about how things should work. Here I've got my thing struct, which stores a number. And I have a pseudo constructor for it. And I have a drop destructor for it. I've also got a team with an A and a B. And I can construct a team. And like C++, Rust is going to auto destruct these things for me based on their lifetimes. And I see thing one, thing two, then destruct thing one, thing two. This destruction order is because early versions of the Rust compiler happened to call drop in this order. And then enough code was in the wild that they chose to just make it official. Note also that these struct members in Rust, instead of indicating construction, indicate ownership only. I'm constructing things outside and then moving them in, which is, of course, an option in C++ as well. Let's see what order things get constructed in by swapping A and B. If I do this, I see thing two is now initialized before thing one, the same as we saw in Zig, and different from what we saw in C and C++. My own personal preference at the moment is that it's nice to see things executed in the order in which I put them in code, but again, side effects are side effects. Before we finish, let's take a look at D for an example of a garbage collected language. In D, just like in C Sharp, Classes and structs are different. Classes are heap allocated and garbage collected by default, and structs are value types and will be destructed when they exit scope by default. And we have a constructor, just like before, that lets us know when we're calling it, and a destructor that's the same. So down here, because team is a struct, when it exits scope, 
A and B will no longer be referenced and the garbage collector is free to collect them. If we run it, we see first that thing one is initialized before thing two, and then we saw thing one is destructed before thing two. And if we look at the D spec, we'll see that this is sort of coincidental because it says that by default, for garbage collected items, there's no guarantee to run it at all. And secondarily, there's no guarantee the order in which they'll be run. In this case though, I happen to get the destructor of thing one and thing two called in this order. Let's change the order of the struct literal and see what happens. We see that we still have thing one and thing two in this order, just like we saw in C and C++, as opposed to the expression order that we saw in Zig and Rust. Note also that today, just for fun, I did everything in curly brace precompiled languages, though these types of issues might apply to a number of other languages as well. Anyway, I hope it's been fun. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.